Welcome to the Mouthpiece. It's day three of the main event, and I'm nowhere to be found. Thank God. But I'm going to tell you what. We're going to talk about the Kathy Griffin Show I appeared on on Tuesday night. We're going to talk about the main event madness, the disaster which was the Rio Hotel World Series of Poker and main event, which they put the icing and sprinkles on the cake with the f***ing main event there. We're going to talk about my horrible play on the TV table. We're also going to talk about me losing my prop bets. That's right. Jeffrey Pollock, you mother... There will be nobody in the tent. Are you kidding me? Also, me having under 6,200 players at the World Series of Poker. Another losing proposition bet. We're going to talk about the sick, sick, sick penalty, disgustingly sick penalty, given to me at the Bellagio main event yesterday. We're also going to talk about my hand of the week, brought to you by my best friend, Matt Lefkowitz. We're going to talk about how happy I am for it to be over. Next, on the mouthpiece. Welcome back to the mouthpiece. As you all have heard, main event's over for me. Thank God. On Tuesday, I made my TV appearance on the Bravo station on the Kathy Griffin show, Kathy Griffin on the D-List. Uh, for all of you out there that saw it, it was really kind of funny. It was a date I had with Kathy Griffin. I know you all heard about me going to be on the show. I was on the show. Um, it was really fun to tape it. It sucks that they cut out the strip poker session I had with Kathy Griffin. But uh, it really was a lot of fun, and the, the final cut was, was really uh, pretty funny. Um, I was pretty excited to watch it. I wish it would have been a little bit longer, but uh, what the heck. It was really fun to watch. So for all of you that saw it, hope you got a good laugh out of it. If you didn't see it, I'm sure they'll be rerunning it this week on Bravo. Uh, and if not, uh, I'm sure you could find it uh, on YouTube. So uh, that was my, my uh, headline of the week is me on the Kathy Griffin Show. Uh, coming up second, well, as you said, I heard, I'm out of the main event. Why am I out of the main event? I played absolutely horrible. It's uh, really, really sad for me to be out. And I say um, I'm out of the main event and I'm happy. I'm happy it's over because it's so disgusting of what has happened at the main event at the Rio. And um, I'm going to let you know all about it uh, here today. And... It was really sick, you know. I played really bad. I, I knew that I was in for a 16-hour day. A 16-hour day? Are you kidding me? Two-week final event, and they're making people play 16 fucking hours on the first day? Four first days? Are they crazy? I mean, this is ridiculous, unheard of, unfair, wrong, disgusting, pitiful, whatever you want to name it, it was horrible. So I uh, got there, and I was trying to play without my medication for the first six hours for the dinner break because I knew after the dinner break I was in for another ten hours. So uh, I didn't take my medication, and uh, I, for all of you that do know me, that without my medication I play very poor. And I tried to play somewhat tight and try and get my way to the dinner break. Uh, with about an hour and a half to go, I was sitting on 26,000 in chips. Uh, and uh, I'm an hour and a half from the dinner break, and all I'm thinking about is don't screw up because you're going to get to the dinner break, you're going to take your medication, and you're going to end up wide awake and feeling good while everybody else is getting tired. Well, unfortunately for me, uh, the lack of medication, and I got a little bit tired, and I disintegrated and on national TV in front of everybody, and it's going to look pretty bad because it was pretty bad. Uh, I played as pathetic as I'm capable possibly of playing, and when I did finally get out and get knocked out, I walked away. Um, I walked away thinking, wow, I, I can't believe how bad I played. Not only that, but almost happy to leave there because I really didn't want to be there. It was, it's, it, it's hard to imagine me not wanting to be at the main event. But, but the, the, the disgustingness of the World Series of Poker, the sickness, the way it was run, the pathetic things that they did, which we're going to get into in a minute, really got to me. And uh, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about here is uh, is those six things. I had some prop bets, as you know, and um, one of my prop bets was uh, that uh, there would be nobody playing in the tent. They added a day four so nobody plays in the tent uh, because the tent's like 130 degrees. Uh, two days before the main event, I actually ran into Jeffrey Pollock at the Voodoo Lounge for the 
Annie Up for Africa uh, charity tournament, which we talked about last week. It was a great tournament. Uh, getting so many A-list celebrities to show up there was great. It was wonderful, and I was really proud of uh, Annie, Duke, and, and um, Don Cheadle for doing what they did. Um, and Jeffrey Pollock says to me this, Go collect your money, Mike. No matter what happens, there will be nobody in the tent. If we have to play in the hallways, in the poker room, that's where the tables will be. Nobody, nobody will play in the tent in this tournament. Thank you, f***ing Jeffrey Pollock, for taking my $10,000 out of my pocket for nobody in the tent. As day three, they put eight tables in the tent. Thank you, Jeffrey Pollock, for adding more bullshit to the World Series of Poker. I'm not Phil Hellmuth. I'm not going to kiss your and tell you how good you run the World Series of Poker. Because you run it like shit. Not to mention you took my ten grand. Prop bet number two. Under 6,200 people in the main event. That's right. That's what I bet. Of course, I made this bet two days before the main event was ready to start. And they had 3,400 people signed up. All right. So they're going to get 2,800 people in two more days. You're going to allow sign-ups for four straight days at the World Series of Poker? Since when does the World Series of Poker allow you to keep signing up after the thing's starting? The first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. Hell, I was out. Ivy was out. Fucking, uh, I, I didn't even know how many top fucking players were out of the tournament. Of course they got 600 people to sign up on day four. Fucking about 100 of the best players in the world weren't in there anymore. Are you crazy? Are you sick? That is the most disgusting thing ever allowed in poker tournaments. They do it here at the Bellagio. I've already been against it at the Bellagio for a long, long, long time. And I've told Jack McClellan this. But to do it at the World Series of Poker and allow sign-ups and running super satellites, mega satellites, ultra satellites, sticking up my ass satellites for four fucking days really, really pissed me off. And I end up losing another 50,000 in fucking side bets going under 6,200. Because of them allowing signups all the way through the end of the main event, which I never would have made that bet anyhow if I knew they were able to do that. Those are the two problems I have. I think it's disgusting for poker. The 16-hour day on day one, why not? This is a two-week-long two tournament. It's a two-week-long tournament. All you have to do is play noon to eight every single day until the World Series is over. Nobody needs to kill themselves. Why does everybody need to kill themselves? Okay, that's another problem I have. What other problem do we have with the main event? Let's see. Let's see if this is a problem. Day 1A concludes for the day. Now, day 1B concludes for the day. Now, anybody knows in common sense that day 1A and day 1B, the two people together are going to play on day 2A. Day 1C and day 1D are going to play on day 2B. Well, let's see what the beautiful and self-destructive Rio Altel found a way to do. At the end of day 1A, they let... They redrew for seats for everybody with 1A. On the end of 1B, we redrew for seats for everybody at 1B. So, even though they all played together on day 2A, none of them played together. They, they drew seats. Everybody played with the same people instead of combining the two. Well, they go Rio Hotel again on a job well fucking done. The main event disaster combined with the World Series disaster of the structures, the greed, the, the disgustingness, the... The $50 sequester fucking box. Where is my fucking box? Somebody find my mother fucking box in here. I know it's around here. Okay? I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what, what I'm going to think about my box here. Here, here. Give me the Rio box. My Rio fucking box. The Rio. The Rio. F the fucking Rio. I hate the Rio. It's over, everybody. Let's change the subject. We're done with the Rio in the main event. Let's see who wins. God, I hope it's somebody I know. We're going to talk about the Bellagio main event. I came into the Bellagio main event, not expecting to play the Bellagio main event, but decided to yesterday because I was so aggravated by how bad I played in the main event of the World Series of Poker. I came in yesterday, I thought I played possibly the best poker I might have ever played in my life. Um, I proceeded to win, and this is a true story. Two pots, chopped one, and stole the blinds 25 times in nine hours. Let's see anybody else in poker win two pots in nine hours and start, still have 20,000 chips he started the day with. It was my greatest, greatest accomplishment, I believe, in my poker career. 
was yesterday's first day. Now, does it mean anything? I'll let you know by the end of this week whether it means anything. Win, lose, or draw, that makes up for my horrendous play at the World Series of Poker. I was really happy with what happened. But we're going to talk about a penalty that occurred to me yesterday at the Bellagio. This could be the most disgusting rule or disgusting penalty ever enforced in the history of poker. This puts sprinkles and icing on top of, it makes the Rio look good. Hello, Rio, superstars of poker. After what that was done to me at the Bellagio yesterday, after I'm waiting for a five-minute hand, and I don't want to call a clock on anybody during this five-minute hand because, you know, it's, it's just, just, I don't call clocks. It's just not the right thing to do. I turn my chair around because uh, somebody just texted me to see what's going on. As I'm being texted, we'll use this banana for episodes. Mr. Someone on the floor puts the banana down. That's clock. That's the clock. And I look at it. What's that? 20-minute penalty. 20-minute penalty? Well, for what? 20-minute penalty for being on my phone while sitting in the ta on the table. 20-minute penalty. I'm not on my phone for sitting in a penalty. I'm turned around, seeing who just texts me, and seeing who it is. No, you're sitting in your chair, on the phone, 20 minute penalty. No, there's no hand going on, okay, that I'm in. Nothing. I'm waiting for a hand to be done. And they gave me a 20 minute penalty. I'm sitting with a chip stack of this for 10 f***ing hours, and they gave me a 20 minute penalty. So they basically said, f*** you, Mike. We're taking your $10,000 entry fee and sticking it right up your ass. Well, that wasn't going to happen. I went berserk. I, yeah, I, I went berserk. I said, you got to be kidding me. And then I go and find out, you know, afterwards, though everybody at the table said that I did nothing wrong, da, 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 that, that there was this big hand going on. They refused to take the penalty away. So everybody at my table took three minutes on every single hand, and I ended up missing three hands in protest of what they did. And that was very nice for the people at the table to do what they did. So I only ended up losing like 600 chips. So I was able to, to recuperate and get to 20,000 at the end of the day by playing great. But... This is really possibly the worst rule ever put in in the history of poker. What really, if they don't want any cell phones at the table or while you're sitting down and, you, and they say you have to get up and stand up, just don't allow a cell phone in the room. It's really easy. You can't decide when you could be on the cell phone, when you can't be on the cell phone. Greg FBT Mueller told me afterwards that he was at the table with Barry Greenstein and Barry Greenstein got a warning not once, not twice, but three times. Okay, I don't want to knock it because I let, you know the tournaments run well or whatever, but you can't be unfair. And that's what that rule does. It allows them to be unfair and selective. You can't be unfair and selective. They said, give Barry Greenstein three warnings, this guy a warning. Oh, Mike Mathis, no, 20 minute penalty. I never got a warning. Lucky for me, the people were nice at my table and it didn't cost me the tournament. Worst rule I ever saw in poker makes the Rio look like superstars. And now we're going to our famous hand of the week. Our hand of the week comes to you by my best friend, Matt Lefkowitz. My very dear friend who just recently, only two hours ago, got knocked out of the main event of the World Series of Poker. He played two days of great poker and found himself really, really unlucky. At one point last night, he had 125,000 in chips, got two kings cracked by King Jack, got all the way down to 50,000 in chips, which is normal for him losing kings against King Jack. And this is the hand of the day that came up. Matt Lefkowitz, there's a raise under the gun, not under the gun, mid-position, I apologize, to 8,000. Matt looked down, he had ace, king of clubs. He looks down at his 49,000 in chips, and he moves in for 41,000 more. The blinds are 12 and 2,400. Everybody folds to the original raiser, who calls in the tank. It doesn't even ask for a countdown as they pull the 8,000 in and says, I call. And what does he turn over? The king three of clubs, my friend Matt had, or the king three of clubs, my friend Matt had ace, king of diamonds, I'm sorry. And lo and behold, he made a flush. The guy put $50,000 in chips in of his 300000 in chips with king three preflop. And you guys want to know why it's going to be tough for a pro to win a tournament? These people are sick. I feel so bad for my friend Matt because the ace came right in the window and the guy hit a flush <laughs> with king three to knock him out. Can you imagine playing two days of poker, playing your heart out, and getting it beat by king three versus ace king, pre-flop all in, 50 grand? That's my hand of the week. That's how sick they are at the World Series of Poker. Now we're going to my best, famous, most important part of the week. The phone calls. Let's ring up the phones. Let's get a lot of calls today. If we don't have a lot, I'm going to let you know next week. Light them up. This is Mike. What do you want?
Act. Yeah. I'm wondering uh, what you're about that. Well, personally, I've been playing poker for about a, a month, and I have no idea what's been going on. So, uh, uh, my my opinion is that uh, George Bush is a cocksucker, and our fucking country's shit. And you can play fucking poker in fucking Afghanistan and Iraq, but you can't play internet poker in, in America. So there's my take on it. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, hopefully things will change in the future. And all of this, I heard, uh, I heard that Vince Cheerleader too would be killing the main event. How about that? Yeah, Vinny Vince Cheer did make it to day two in the main event. Um, the, the rumor has it that he actually had a bodyguard, his backer, go and get him up to make sure he shows up for day two. Uh, you would think the guy would have hired a bodyguard to get him at dinner break before he blew off all his chips. But, you know, uh, Vinny Vin, uh, you know what, it's really a, it's becoming a story of stories. Yeah, why does it keep happening? Yeah, why does it keep happening? It's called D-R-U-G-S, drugs. Drugs are very, very bad. Take it from somebody that's done speed before, meth before. Okay, it's the most addicting drug in the world, but even as, even when I did it, I never seen anything like this. I mean, sign up for a tournament and then don't show back up. I mean, I mean, I can see maybe one time, but like this is like even this is un unbelievable. <laughs> he, he, he's the biggest laughing stock of poker. Well, well, what are you gonna do? What can you do? Okay, right? Exactly. What's your name, man? My name's Robert. Robert, thanks for the call, man. Call me anytime. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Hey, Mike. How's it going? My name's Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Where are you from? I'm from Dallas, Texas. Hey, Kevin. Nice talking to you, man. What's going on? Yeah, great speaking with you. Uh, I'm a big fan. And, uh, thanks. I just wanted to ask you, ask you a question. Uh, I want to see why is it the, uh, in the main event that a lot of the pros are having trouble? Uh, well... The truth of the matter is, is, and you're going to, if you watch this show once it goes up by tonight or tomorrow, you're going to hear a lot of things of why uh, uh, the pros are having problems. It's got mostly to do with the fact that, that the Rio are no fucking clue what they're doing. And they have a horrendous structure. They decided they're going to give everybody double the chips, but they're going to double the structure and they're going to skip all, all those levels a lot of levels early, and which forces you almost to gamble. And uh, you have so many bad players that uh, that's basically what's going on. But there is a lot of very, very, very great, great players with chips. So uh, if you look at the top 30 in the leaderboard, there's at least 15 of them that are named players. So, you know, it's, it, it, there's a lot of, lot of people struggling, but there's a lot of really good players still left. Okay, well, that's, that's cool. My, my other question. Uh, no, I'll be I'll be honest with you. And I, I was very very lucky. I was a poker dealer at Sam's Town, and I had a an older gentleman that came in and and I dealt to every night. And when I wasn't dealing, I was playing, and everybody knew I was the best player there, and everybody knew that I had a history of taking all the money I made and losing it betting sports. And uh, he uh, said he wanted to back me playing higher stakes poker. And he gave me a shot, staking me, and I made a lot of money for him and me, and that was basically how I got my start. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, I was. that's why whenever I get a lot of money, I always stake a lot of people and help people out, because if somebody didn't help me out, I wouldn't have been uh, as fortunate as I was. Well, that's great that you're giving back. You seem like a great guy, and uh, keep it up, and I wish you uh, much success. Thank you so much. I appreciate the call. Call any time. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike the Mouth out of the main event, broke ass Madiso. Who the f? Yeah. Uh, Mike. Uh, no, it's fucking George. Yeah, Mike. Oh, what's up, man? Who's this? This is Nick. This is uh, Rich the cameraman's cousin. Nick, Rich the cameraman's cousin. Are you rich? Yeah. Oh, the dickhead goofball looking motherfucker standing in front of me. Yeah, pretty much. Why don't you throw something at him? Yeah, throw something at him? <laughs> Alright, I just hit him with a chip. What's going on? Oh. What's up? What do you want? You got a question for me? Nah, man, I just want to call, you know, get you to chuck something at him. I'm 
work right now. He told me to call you up, but I, I didn't actually believe that uh, you were going to talk to me. Do you know anything about poker? Well, what the f***? This is a call Mike the Mouth and Ask Me Questions show. What are you calling to f***ing ask me? If I want to throw another chip at Rich? <laughs> Alright, I threw another chip at him. <laughs> what else? <laughs> um, did you lose another... Uh, am I bankrupt again? Or... <laughs> am I bankrupt again? F*** you, man! Who is this motherfucker? Goodbye! This is Mike the Mouth Matteso. I'm signing off. I'm out of here. I've had enough. We'll see you next week on the Mouthpiece.